want us to shout the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Let's shout his name, the name above every name. Jesus! just declared the name that's above every name every stronghold broken every demonic power destroyed healing in your body healing in your heart healing in your mind healing in the whole man because Jesus is Lord hallelujah 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 glory to God Glory to God, the name above all names. The name above all names. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord through the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ha. We bear the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As he is, so are we in this world. Glory to God. All power and authority has been given unto Jesus and he gave us that authority on earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you, Everything of the devil is under your feet. You have your foot on his neck. He is destroyed. He has no power over us. We bear the most powerful name there is, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, oh, for sending Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell you, healing's flowing. Healing's flowing through this place. Grab a hold of it. Healing's flowing through this place. Jesus, our healer, is walking among us, healing you. Pain's leaving bodies. I'm telling you, check yourself out. Healing is flowing through this house. Healing is flowing through this house. Christ, our healer. Broken hearts are being healed. Oh, restore. See, restoring. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody just set totally free from headaches. Totally free from migraines right now. Holy, holy. Necks, necks. Check your neck out. Necks are being healed. Move your head around. Do what I'm telling you. Necks and shoulders are being healed. The healing virtue of Christ is in this house. Oh, Rababari de Jesus. Rishtana Mama Hatari Mana. Oh, Rababa. Just lay your hand on yourself where you need healing. Healing flow into your body, to your stomachs, backs, all of your being. Oh, Rabadadana Mesadana Mana. Oh, Rabata Dedes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be not anxious for anything. I just see the healing virtue of the Lord saying, cast that care on me. Cast that care on me, I care for you. Cast that care on me, I care for you. Oh, Rabba Setene. You didn't know Robas. Tell you, the 
Yvonne shared with me that God is a covenant God. He's with you when you pray. He's with you when you walk. He's with you every day because he's a God who keeps covenants. And his covenant love for you will never be broken. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. That's Nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Some of you have felt separated. Some of you fell apart from him, but right now, this moment, he's wrapping you up in his arms and he's saying, you are my beloved, you are my accepted. Somebody's feeling like it, it's, it's over. I just don't know if I can go any farther. Well, lift up your head. Your redemption has just drawn nigh. I see the Lord taking your hand and you're standing up off of those feeble knees and he's leading you. He's leading you into the fullness of his destiny. The Lord would say to you, I am not through with you. You've not done anything that has separated my love from you. My love now comes more strongly in your life because you need my love right now. And I'm pulling you out of that loneliness, that despair, that weariness, that depression. I'm pulling you up into myself and I'm pulling you up into holiness and I'm pulling you up into the place where I will set you free for I am the Lord, your God who loves you. I have called you and put you in my presence before the foundation of the world. Yea, I've hidden you in my son and you've been seated with him in heavenly places. Ha ha, rimbo rosta senama. And he's pulling you up right now. Some of you he's lifting and pulling you up because you, you are worthy by the blood of the Lamb to stand in the Holy of Holies. I said, you are worthy by the blood of the Lamb to stand in the Holy of Holies. It's the blood of the Lamb that has made you worthy. Not anything you've done, not by works, not nothing like that. The Lord, by the blood of his Son, has put you into his holy place. You're even now seated at his right hand in Christ Jesus. Lift up those feeble knees. God has decreed you holy by the blood of Jesus. Let not what man has said to you, those are lies. You are holy unto the Lord your God by virtue of the blood of the Son. Hallelujah. You've been brought out of light into darkness. Hallelujah. It's God alone through his son that has made you worthy. And that worthy blood has brought you into the presence of your God. And you are now a son and a daughter of the most high God. Your father loves you. Your father loves you. Your father loves you. Hallelujah. And nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. I break every stronghold. I break every stronghold. I just hear the Lord say, come on out. Come on in. Right now, many of you are being brought into his presence. And I hear some of you say, well, I'm just not worthy. <laughs> are you saying... The blood of Jesus wasn't enough. It's the blood of the Lamb that has made you worthy to receive His Spirit who sanctifies you and seals you. He's the guarantee of your eternal future with God. today. I just remove by the spirit of grace the shame of your youth. God right now is removing that shame. I tell you there's something wonderful working right now. God's calling you to himself by his not by virtue of what you've done or will ever do. But by virtue of of the blood of Jesus. Your Father is there to embrace you, to embrace you and love you. Spirit of grace, take us into the throne room. We have access through the blood by the Spirit of God. 
Holy Spirit is a spirit of love and acceptance. Hallelujah. I break all judgment of words that's been spoken over you. I cast them out and cast them down. And I declare the word of the Lord. You are worthy by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lamb of God. You are worthy and you are holy unto your God. forever 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 glory to God hallelujah 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 mm, Jesus Jesus Jesus. I break every lion demon of hell that has told you you're not worthy or even through a, a so-called Christian who would tell you you need to do this, that, and the other. I tell you, there's one thing you do. You say, thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus. He alone has made me worthy. I break those words off of you. I break that judgment off of you right now. Because the love of God the Father is in your heart, is in your mind, in your soul. I just see an interesting picture. I see babies in cradles being rocked and loved for. I see them laying out on the street and laying in the darkness of the world and, and, and they've been beat up. And the Lord says, here, you're mine. I'll place you in the cradle of my love and I will rock you back and forth so that you'll know you're totally mine, totally accepted, totally accepted in the beloved. Oh, riba shatana Jesus. Oh, landara, freedom, freedom, freedom that Christ has purchased you to be free so that by love we can serve one another. I see somebody on their hands and knees in a dark place and it's like something is beating on you I break that off of you now it's enough I rebuke this demon spirit go from this person now Jesus walk up I see him walking up and lifting you up lifting your chin up to look at his face and say stand Stand in my presence. You are worthy. You are worthy. Those words of abuse are destroyed right now. That judgment is broken off of you. I just see the Lord lifting you up, holding you in his arms and saying, Meet the Father. I have paid the price for you to meet your father. Healed of all that abuse. Thank you, Lord. Someone's hearing is improving right now. Your hearing is improving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
people that have skin problems. I speak healing right now. The oil of the Spirit. Put oil on this on this skin. No more rashes, no more dryness, no more right now. The oil of God is soaking your skin and moisturizing it, and we declare it to be gone. To be gone in Jesus' name. From my granddaughter, everybody that's in here. See crippled arthritic type hands being healed right now. And I tell you, if you'll start moving your hands, you're going to discover that pain is gone. Your elbows are being healed. God is ministering healing to you right now. Oh, receive it, receive it, receive it. Hallelujah. I just keep hearing this. There's no judgment. God took all the judgment of sin and put it on Jesus, his son. It says the spiritual man is to be judged by nobody because God has set you free. I just keep seeing words that's been spoken by, sad to say this, but by other believers. words out of them right now. I command them to fall. I command them to be lifeless. And I decree the word of the Lord over you. The blood of the Lamb has made you worthy. There is no judgment. There is no condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus. Just let tears of healing flow You are worthy by the blood of Jesus. You are worthy by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, just breathe in the breath of heaven. Refreshing of Jesus. It says when his presence comes, there's refreshing. Jesus said if we come to him, he'll give us rest and refreshing. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We thank you. In the beauty of holiness, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) I see. It's a beautiful picture. I see the Lord right now. I see a door open and on the other side of that door is the brightness of his glory and of his future for you and I see him taking every one of us by the hand and walking us into his perfect will he's opened a door now no man can shut take his hand and walk with him through it I seen somebody, somebody slap somebody's hand and said, you're not worthy, you can't do that. I break that off of you. Command you demon spirit to leave. And you are worthy. Now reach up and take his hand by the blood of Jesus. He's taken you to a new place in him where you've never been before. Total freedom and liberty to walk with Jesus in his glory and his plans and purposes for your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dos denemea. No name above the name of Jesus. You've been called by his name. You belong to no other. 
through the sheep of his pasture. I just command every false shepherd to flee from God's people. By that I mean this. Anywhere where the enemy has tried to deceive you, showing himself to be a shepherd, disguising himself as an angel of light, I break that right now. And I remove that deception from you. Now Jesus can smile upon you. And you hear his voice. He's your great shepherd. I see the Lord putting his hand in people's hearts. And he's healing the brokenhearted right now. He's healing all that brokenness placing his love in there. Wow. I heard someone, maybe many people, but I heard him say, and, and I've seen you in traumatic situations, and I see that you, I've seen you cry out and say, Lord, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And you felt forsaken, but the Lord is there all the time. And he's here now to set you free from that experience with his love. He is not mad at you at all. He's here to comfort you and strengthen you, establish you. And you will walk in that which you've been called to walk in. And in these last days, you shall be an instrument of God to bring salvation to many, healing and hope and peace. I see the healing power of God arising in you as people. The signs, wonders, and miracles like we never thought possible begin to occur because we're bought with the blood of Jesus to serve him and to worship him only. Wow. Just lift your hands to heaven and say, Jesus, I'm yours. Thank you for your great love. Then turn to your neighbor and say, I love Jesus with all my heart. Make that declaration. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, worship team. Yeah, it took us into the Holy of Holies. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Folks, we just encountered the Lord. I guarantee you those healing virtues are going out to you. One thing I kept seeing over and over and over is words of judgment that's been spoken by another believer or by your parents or the devil speaks judgment to you when you read the Bible. I just saw that so big. And I saw, and you heard me speak, it's gone over you. The word of the Lord prospers in your life that says, you're my beloved. You're my beloved. You will fulfill his will by his great mercy. Amen. We're going to go ahead and bless the Lord with our tithes and offerings and you know, if you need an offering envelope, lift your hands. But I was seeing some things in the spirit that I didn't speak out everything. But one of the things I saw was financial blessings coming to you. And, and increase maybe in salary, increase in maybe a new job or raise into a new position, promotion promotion cometh from the Lord and you know God is a God that loves 
success. It says if we meditate on him day and night and be careful to observe everything that he says, it says then you will prosper and have good success. God wants you to have good success. And I hear the Lord saying to the young people in this place, God is quickening the spirit upon you. You're standing on the shoulders of fathers. And time is drawing close, but now is the season for the young people, the young handmaidens and men servants of the Lord to arise in a greater anointing than the old generation had. It's awesome. Of much whom is given, much is required. But the requirement is his grace. So he's called you to, you'll walk in, a, you'll walk in humility and holiness unto the Lord. And I'm telling you, there's a new refreshing coming up on us older generation to be fathers and mothers, to be examples. It's time you've grown up be an example to especially the younger ones, younger than you. It's never a time for you to say, oh man, I just know so much. Well, if you know so much, impart it with love and grace. God, like Pastor Joe said, we're a multi-generational people. Each generation has its own unique calling. And our calling now, if you're older like I am, to take what has been given to you and strengthen others with it. Strengthen others with it. Condemnation, judgment never strengthens anybody. It destroys them. But when we walk in what we've learned in Christ, like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Father, thank you that we today <laughs> can offer up the Jesus who's after the order of Melchizedek, our tithes and offerings, as a first fruit, that you can blow up on them, you can bless them, and turn them into a harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to have a wonderful time of baptism today. It's going to be awesome. Jesus said, forbid not the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to see some kids and some uh, older ones, adults, being baptized today. And we believe in submersion because the word baptizo in the Greek means to completely submerge. And it's a picture of when they used to lower a, a water bucket into a well, and they'd let it soak up until the bucket went down under the water. So it was totally submerged, full of water inside and out. And it also, we present our bodies a living sacrifice. And I believe the first step in mercy is water baptism. Because you're declaring before witnesses that I have died in Christ. The old man is dead. But now I'm raised in Christ, a new creation. And the kids will be given a testimony. Of, they've been teaching them on water baptism for about three or four weeks now, and they're going to give up about a one-minute testimony each child before they're baptized of who Jesus means to them. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to have dads, I think, are they still grandfathers, yeah. baptizing their kids? And I want to break something. See, a lot of people think, oh, you have to be ordained. No, you don't. No, you don't. Believers baptize believers. Amen. Amen. I was baptized by my grandfather, and I baptized him. It was awesome. Praise God. I think he held me under a long time. I don't remember. But 
I said, Lord, do something with this boy. <laughs> no, it was out in a creek in Kansas, out to, called, I think it's Sandy Creek or whatever it's called. It was wonderful. So anyway, I'm going to have, uh, uh, yeah, come on up here. Sometimes names just go wrong. Tell us what's happening tomorrow for the eclipse. You know, Sam Houston, he was baptized when he was an old man, older man in, in 1844, and pastor said, well, he baptized, well, general, your sins are washed away, and he said, God help the fish downstream. <laughs> so, so uh, I, I want to thank you guys first. Uh, we, we've been involved in this Eclipse project for about nine months, and we've had a lot of prayer support from the church. and. And it's really important, it's really important uh, for prayer because I had no idea what I was doing and God just kind of guided me step by step. And almost always at the last minute too, my wife thinks I'm very disorganized and she's right, I am. So, so tomorrow there are going to be 1,500 churches and prayer ministries who are participating with us uh, throughout the United States in this project. We, the last two months we had 25,000 people at our website and, uh, and we're, we're really praying that God is going to change America. Amen. Amen? Amen. God's going to save America. God is not finished with America. Amen. But what has to happen to America is people have to turn back to God. Amen. And that's what we're praying about tomorrow. That's what we're, that's what we're doing tomorrow. Uh, God is, uh, has been showing up even this week. Uh, yes, on Thursday, my daughter, Audra uh, Smolinski, who's a realtor in town, she, she talked to the, uh, the city man in charge of the park, and he said, you've been misinformed. It's a public offering, and you, a public gathering, and you can pass out your material in the park all you want. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. Fantastic. And then she introduced me to... Uh, uh, Jeremiah Gray, who's the manager of the Perk Coffee Shop down on Main Street, and uh, he let us buy 200 free specialty drinks, which we can give to people on, uh, on uh, that day and invite them, you know, to come, come and be part, part of the Lord. You know, now I spoke last week a little bit, and I just, so the question is, what are you going to tell these people? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them God put this beautiful sign up in the sky to tell you he loves you. Just, it's just like a rainbow. There's nothing goofy or mysterious about it. He put the sign in the sky to tell you he loves you. And he wants you to be part of his family. And if you are part of his family, well, be sure you're going to the church where, you're, where you belong. But if you're not, why don't you come give us a try? This is a wonderful church, a loving church, right? So you know, what we need to do now is, is uh, have workers tomorrow. Now, most of you are going to be at work, and that's where you need to be, okay? You need to be at work, and you need to tell people about Jesus at work. The eclipse comes at about 1.40 in the afternoon, um, and uh, we, we want you to be telling folks that you're at work. We're at work. That's, 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 you know, we're out, out in the city. Now, I've got... I've got some uh, flyers here, and we passed a bunch out last week, and I said I didn't think I could get any more Eclipse glasses, but I got some. <laughs> I got 200, just the same number as the drink. So, so this, is, uh, this is what it looks like now. We've got the specialty drink on there. We've got Eclipse glasses, and we've got a flyer. Now, if you're not going to be at the park, you know, and, and you're, you're not going to be close into town where you work, I've got another box of just flyers you can give out, and I'm going to put those at the far back when you leave and take all of them because they won't, they won't be much good on, uh, on Tuesday, okay? But where you work, tell people about Jesus, and we are going to do an outreach ourselves at the, at, at the park, and we're praying for some evangelists. After the service, I'm going to ask some people to meet, meet me back in the corner back there. Uh, you know, my, my daughter... She's kind of like her mother. She has one of these Deborah anointings. You know, they send you places. So my daughter says, you know, you ought to be in the coffee shop. Somebody ought to be in the coffee shop handing out these, 
these uh, flyers b before the eclipse. I said, boy, that's a great idea. I wonder who God will send. <laughs> it's awful when you're the answer to your own prayer. He's sending me. I'm going to be there at 6.30 in the morning. So I need a lot of prayer. <laughs> may stay up all night. I'm not sure. But I, I'm going to be there at 6.30 in the morning tomorrow at the Perk Coffee House. And anybody that wants to join me is certainly welcome to come. But what we need most of people to do is to show up about 11.45. Because the event in the park that the city's sponsoring runs from 12 to 2. Now, if you have a chance to take off a lunch break, you could take a late lunch, like from 1 to 2, and come join us. I will tell you that it's got to, the park has got to be awful. You know, I don't know where you're going to park. Uh, some people are actually saying they're going to park at the church and walk over there. God bless them. That's one of the one advantage of getting there at 6.30 is I don't have to worry about where I park. <laughs> but, uh, and, and uh, if you want to, if you want to do that, that'd be great. Or maybe, maybe somebody will have mercy on you guys and drive you back. We'll have a driver drive us back and forth, you know, from the, from the church. And I wanted to show you, you know, I asked Hector to help me out. You know, in the in the uh, Perk Coffee House, they're going to let us set up a place in there where we give. A, it's going to be our headquarters. They're going to let us set up a table where we can give away, you know, our flyers and our free drinks and our glasses. And Hector made me. Uh, he made me two of these. Isn't that great? Thank you, Hector Silva. <laughs> that was fantastic. Look at that. So, so we will uh, we will be ready tomorrow. Amen. So, so. You know, so please, if, if, you, if you want to be part of the outreach in the park, talking to people, tell them how God loves them. You know, don't be bashful. you got something you can give them. You know, give them a free drink and some glasses. Maybe they'll talk to you and don't be bashful. And so I'm going to be back in that back corner after the service. And, you know, if you miss this eclipse, well, you know, there'll be another one in 300 years. It's okay. okay. Oh, and the weather. You know, I have, you know, the, the weathermen say, well, there may be high clouds and, and, and you can still see most of the eclipse. We're, we are praying for God to stick his finger through the crowd, cloud and make a hole for us. Now, I actually saw him do that once, praise God, for an eclipse I was at in France. I will also say I was at another eclipse where there was nothing but deluge and darkness. And God, there's a message in whatever, whatever happens tomorrow in the sky, there's a message from God because he is the master of the storm. Amen? So we're going to show up, rain or shine. We're going to tell people God loves them. We're going to see what happens in the sky, and we're going to pray about it. And if there's an additional message we need to know after that, well, we'll pray about it, and we'll let everybody know. Amen? God will probably let you know, too. So anyway, God bless you guys. Tomorrow will be a great day. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell you, God is sending, going to send people to this church Keep the baptismal fount warm because you're going to use it a lot. Yeah, amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Um, Dave, I'm, I'm going to have you wait till next week. Okay? And then the week after that, we'll have Wendy come and share. The, I want them both to share their overseas experience and I was going to do it this morning but we're, we're running late but um, God spoke to us how many of you really God ministered to you awesome well the rest of you just missed it okay, I'm sorry <laughs> Pastor Joel last week such a blessing his honorarium told Dorothy, he said, I want to take half of my honorarium and put it towards the expense of the roof. So that's the way Joe works. And so the roof is all done. Thank you, Norm, and your crew. And Amen. So we have a brand new roof up there that's going to last a long, long, long time. Have you gotten a, a hint from God that he's about to put you in a position of great influence and authority? And of whom much is given, much is required. But 
we can't fulfill this requirement in our strength. We do it by submitting to the grace of God. The grace of God is God's power and authority to keep sin under our feet, to keep us pure and holy, to bring the revelation of the word into our heart, into our mind, into our thinking. So I'll have to come two weeks. Next week, Dorothy and I, were going to Andrews. I'll be speaking in the school there next Monday to the third year minister students, which I speak to every year. And um, so just keep us lifted up. And I'll finish up a couple weeks on the living epistles. But I would encourage you as much as I can to keep reading 2 Corinthians 3 and 4. Meditate on it because that is the old covenant that brought death moved us into the new covenant of life, the ministry of the Spirit forever. And as first Adam was a living soul, last Adam, Christ, is a life-giving spirit. So what does that mean to us? We are life-giving spirits. We are made in the image of Christ. We minister by the Spirit. We are ministers of the Spirit to bring life. The Holy Spirit only brings life. And when we minister in the Spirit, we bring life. And ministering in the Spirit is ministering in the light of God's Word. And briefly, I want to share this with you. Then we're going to have the kids come in. You are going to be so blessed that these kids have made a decision that Jesus is their Lord. And um, all the, the, like I said, the children's workers, Becky and, and uh, Pam and, and uh, Tanya, and all of you that have been working with these kids, they've been working with them like three weeks on teaching them about baptism. That's awesome. I just want to share this with you briefly. It's meditating on this. First Corinthians. And I'm going to say this to you. I'm not bragging, but I've been meditating on these scriptures for 45 years. And I still meditate on them. I still read them. I still go through them. And I keep gleaming more and more and more and more and more. The old covenant was a covenant of death and I showed you when we first started this that the, the stones up there had been chiseled on. And then I brought uh, two people up here, Jan and Will. And I said, these are the living epistles. And I had the stones, remember? And I said, that's all the old covenant people saw was those stones. And when people aren't born again, they still see those stones. But when... The veil is lifted and we receive Christ. We become a living epistle of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the living word is Jesus and the written word. The written word is of no value to you if you don't have an intimacy with the living word, Jesus. And when you have an intimacy with the living word, the Lord Jesus, then his written word becomes spirit and life because the spirit and life of Christ is in those words. But if we try and just go by the Bible and do all that stuff without having an intimate personal relationship with Jesus, that living word will be law. But when I have a relationship with the king, then his word, written words, his words are spirit and life to us. And that's when the word of the written word of God becomes alive because I'm in an intimate relationship with the living word, Jesus. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amen. I just want to throw that. Daniel, come up here. And both of you, come up here. They're getting ready to move, I think, to Montana. Where? South Dakota. Well, I was close. It's right on the border. 
And Daniel went up there and, and to find a job, and he got a job. Yeah. Amen. So I just wanted to, us to pray over him, pray over them as a family. Uh, this is, house, you fought, got a house up oh, there? Yeah, you got a house? So he went up, got a job. Job pays more than what he makes now. So it's just amazing. Great benefits, all of that. So we're really excited about that. Then he went and looked at this house, and he goes, I love this house. Everybody loves this house. And I kind of looked at him I'm like, okay. So we made an offer, and they accepted it. So we have a house. And then he came home, and I worked hard all week to make my house look pretty because I wanted pretty pictures. So I made my house pretty, and they did a coming soon and just showed the front of the house. Our house was on the market for less than 10 hours, and we got two offers. So it's, it's a great offer. So basically, it's, uh, it was $4,500 over asking, and we want to lease back so the kids can stay in school until the end of school, and they're not charging us for the lease back. Yeah, when that stuff happened, is, is it on? Yeah, about a year or so ago, is, is the wife and I and the family going through some hard times, financially, family, stress, work, all that good stuff in life that they don't tell you about when you're younger. <laughs> so, I, I drive a trash truck, and when you sit by yourself for 10 to 12 hours a day, you got a lot of time to think. And I'm talking about just, am I going crazy? And the wife's always saying yes, because us husbands, men, we, we're always crazy. So uh, throughout the time, I was getting these weird signs, and I'm not much, much of a religious person, because before I met the wife, the most time I spent at the church was watching a NASCAR race and them doing prayers before a race. So any time of signs are like that, I was talking to the wife. So I talked to her, and I'm telling her about the signs. I'm, I'm like, am I crazy? She's like, no, that's baby Jesus talking to you, giving you hints and so on. So I talked to Rich, and I asked him the same thing. He goes, no, it's not crazy. I just got to trying to tell you something. And then so, of course, back at work, sitting another 10 to 12 hours a day, and I'm like, Huh, it all of a sudden is life like her and it went on. So then talked to Rich again and he gave me a good quote, quote not quote, not scripture, uh, Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Okay. Read about it every day for it to kick in. And I'm like, holy jeez, for some reason this worked. So <laughs> it is like, it's like, it's kind of like the engine's running, but no one's behind the wheel. That's just how my brain sometimes works when I don't really know about, about stuff. So then my next thing is like uh, <clears throat> four and five, six and seven to get to 500 steps. How we're going to sell the house, how we're going to get up there, job connections. And it was just when I went up there after the wife did, I was like, I don't know how we're going to go up there. But there's two special folks in here that I, I can't think special enough for able to uh, uh, help us out there is because when I came to here at church, I'm alone on my birthday, he comes up to me and says, we want to help you out to buy uh, you a ticket there and back. Mm. I'm like, really? I was like, holy jeez. He's like, okay. He's like, I don't deserve it. He goes, you, you do, but we want to help you out for uh, nothing happens on the way up there, broken down a car. You just never know. We just Blizzard. want you... Oh, yeah, Blazer, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of sketchy flying back when it was 30 degrees and snowing. And, man, God, God bless those pilots because they got, they got nerves of steel, not me. <laughs> so long story short, got this opportunity. And uh, not just job-wise, but other personal reasons, it's going to really benefit us out in ways that I never thought even could be possible. And... The only one I can really thank is the eight pound, nine ounce golden little diaper of oh, baby gosh. Jesus. I like the Christmas version better, not the beater Jesus. I like the Christmas version. Let's see. So you got a job. So, 
when my mama said, when she took me to the interview, just go be yourself. I'm like, oh, you're asking a lot. I'm like, I'm, I hate interviews. I feel a stickler. I just, I hate interviews. Within an hour and a half, they offered me the job. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, yes, yes, yes. I'm up front. I'm like a duck upon, above the water. Feet are moving really fast. Nervous can be, but I'm like, okay, awesome, let's go. And when got you, the. When do you start? Well, I gotta April be there. Class. No, I gotta be there April 12th on a Friday for paperwork, and then I officially start on the 15th of April. Yeah. So you'll be leaving this week. Yep. Oh, thank you, Lord. Stretch your hands out here, because I know when they said this a year ago. Look how God, what God did. Father, I just thank you for this precious family. Lord, I thank you for the time we've had to be able to just bless them and minister to them. But Father, I bless them now as they go forward. That you've already blessed them financially with their home. And Father, everything else they have need of, you will supply in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen. Well, thank you. Praise God. Where is Miss Becky? That's awesome, isn't it? That, that God watched God do that. Did you have something to say? Yeah, we have a couple other announcements while they're getting ready. Okay, while well, the kids are coming up here, Dorothy has a couple announcements. All right, so uh, there's an old ladies' Bible study tomorrow morning, so they'll resume the next Sunday real quickly. Uh, Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock. Uh, 9 o'clock in the pavilion. Uh, God's word is God's will. Uh, the, um, we're getting ready to do on uh, April the 19th on a Friday night uh, a letter to the American church. It's a movie. And we were, somebody recommended it to us. We can't remember who it was, but it is awesome. So it'll be for the church. So we need you to sign up back there, RSVP, at the, in the church foyer today. And then Connie has a real quick announcement. Okay, at the next day after the letter to the American church, which is a Friday night, on Saturday, we're going to do a um, lady who has gr grew up here in LISD and for since 20 since 2000 has been researching LISD issues and so she's going to come and talk to us about what's going on in our school district and guys our children are our most precious asset and and how we take care of them i, I mean god god is this is critical so i'm asking you to come to the LISD and Bring your friends and neighbors to find out what's going on. It's, it's an eye opener. Thank you. And if you can't be there, talk to Connie. Uh, I've seen some of the stuff that is going on there. It's unbelievable. So please uh, be praying for those times. Also, I, uh, Ron, when, he, uh, when we're passing out those flyers, it has our church information on the back. So we're intending to invite people to the church. And if they don't have a church, there's a lot of new residents over here that we want to make aware that we're here. And they will never know we're here if we don't tell them, right? So, amen. It's going to be good. Amen. If you're a first-time visitor, you can go back out to your left. Uh, and uh, I have a free book back there that, uh, of mine that you can get. Get it free. Sign up. All right. Where's Miss Becky? Are you ready? All right. I move this stuff. So, come on. What do we need a couple minutes for? <laughs> okay, we're really excited. Uh, about eight children have made their decision to be water baptized. We've had a class on it. They understand what they're doing. And uh, they're amazing. They're just amazing. Some of them have decided to make their declaration of faith before they go, get water baptized. So um, I've got them down here, and I'm going to, uh, if they get a little shy, then I'll help them out. If not, they're going to do it on their own. All right, the first one is Audrey Purnell. You want to read it? Okay. 
I'm going to put the microphone so everybody can hear you. After baptism, I will be obedient to my parents and God. Amen. Amen. All right, baby. Uh, where's Miss Pam? You didn't go far, Grandma. You're going to go over here and talk about it. All right. The second one is Peyton Young. You want to read it? You can do it. You can do it. You can't do it? All right. You stand in here. She's shot. Okay. Peyton uh, accepted Jesus while she was here at this church, and she decided to be water baptized. And so she's a little shy, but so I'm going to read what she wrote. To me, water baptism means repenting for your sins and showing the world that you can change for the better with Christ. I chose to be baptized because I want to show people that I have accepted Jesus in my heart and that his love is all I need. After my baptism, I expect to feel a great change and all my worries and sins are washed away and put at his feet of Jesus so I can start a new clear path. The next one is Sam Strickland. That's okay, you can keep it. Do you want to read it, baby? <laughs> okay. Sam wants me to read this. They all wrote them personally. When I come out of the water, I expect to be a better person. I won't fight with my brother and to stop crying. Take your bag and go over there with Miss Pam. Take your bag. All right. And the next one is Paisley Kitzmiller. Do you want to say it? Okay. I expect all of my problems to go away. All right. <laughs> oh, the next one is David Kitzmiller. You want to read it? You want to read it? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> David says, when I come out of the water, I think I will become a new person, and I want to make good choices and be a better person. Hello. Hello. Okay. Go, go over there. Do we have, do you guys want to? I'm sorry, you can have to announce your name. Huh? <laughs> yes, I'm Samuel Martinez. And the reason why I want to be baptized is, well, Romans 6 and many other places in the Bible affirm that, indeed, when you are baptized, you are affirming publicly that you are dying to your old man and you are resurrected with Jesus. So I want to, I have long believed in Jesus, but I want to publicly declare this through baptism. My name is Ederson, and I believe you should get baptized, everybody, because Jesus did it himself, even though he's, you know, everything, he's I am, and he still got baptized by his cousin, and he told everybody they should get baptized, and I believe that when you get baptized, you die, and you get reborn in, this, in your new body in the temple. Right, this is your phone. Is this your phone, Becky? Does anybody know? I got a free phone. Oh. Is that precious? Wow. Wow. You know, uh, the, 
There you are. The day will come when this will be a constant thing. When we were at Melody Land, Dorothy and I, back in the 70s, uh, Melody Land was the largest charismatic church at over 20,000 members. And uh, Pastor Ralph Wilkerson was a pastor, and we used to baptize Sunday evenings and Thursday. Thursday had a miracle service. And we would baptize anywhere from 50 to 100 each time. And it was so powerful that they went in, they had the ladies' side and the men's side, and they went and put white robes on. When we walked by them, they would all fall under the power, literally. And, and we had to wait before somebody could get up before we could baptize them. It's a true story. The most incredible time I've ever seen in water baptism where people came up and I seen them instantly healed, speaking in tongues, because there's a real encounter. This is just, this is not just getting wet. But the precious testimony of these kids understanding what's happening to them, that, that's precious. So whenever, are you ready, Pastor Mike? All right. Let's just enjoy this. thank you for this time together Lord and we thank you Lord that this is going to be a blessing beyond anything that we can think ask or imagine and we're grateful for the opportunity to baptize these children yes. and be that blessing that we need to be Father thank you Lord for everyone that is here that has invested and participated and been a part of this we're grateful for our families and our, our relatives that are all a part of this Lord now Lord have your way during this baptism do whatever you want to do and let the glory of God shine throughout in everything that we do. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. So, Audrey, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. and I now baptize you in the name of the Father and in the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. Okay. So 
So Peyton, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Full name? Desiree May Jones. Desiree. What a blessing you are. Yes. Desiree, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. So be it. Desiree, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Turn the kids around. Turn them around. You want us to re-baptize them? <laughs> you want to do it over again? <laughs> do I have Samuel? there's no technology in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. What, what, what's your full name? Samuel Van Strickland. Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. All right, Samuel. I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Take your full name. Samuel Clarion Martinez. Samuel, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and decided to follow him with all your heart? I have. Very well. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are now baptized.
Have you accepted the Lord as your Savior in your heart? Then Paisley, give me your full name. Paisley Grace Kitzmiller. Paisley Grace Kitzmiller. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you and now a new person. He doesn't need this. He doesn't need this there. So let him hand that over there to you. David Kitzmiller, have you accepted the Lord in your heart as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Give me your full name. David Kitzmiller Michael. David Michael Kitzmiller. Is that your nose? I want you to okay, cross your arms, David. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you. We want to thank all of you. First of all, shout out needs to go to the children's ministry with Becky Watson, with Tanya with Pam and with Monica. Thank you guys for making such a special, special occasion. And also the youth with Tina and with Jessica and Esteban. Thank you guys for making this all special. This is a very special event that's not only part of their personal walk, but becomes part of our personal walk as they have become part of us in a new creature. Let's close in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you, Father, for all of the new creations that have been created. And that the old person, Father, and all of these people have passed away. And all things have been declared new. And Father, we just thank you that they will become a light in your kingdom along with all of the youth that they will be a beacon of light, that they will bring in all of the people that need to be bringing in, that, Father, they will save us sometimes from our own wretchedness. And, Father, we just thank you. We give you the honor and the glory, Father, to have this presence today with you and with all of these children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week.